How do you get the highest probability of good out of sample results in a trading system? Should you key off the data streams on related or inverse markets to what you're trading? Or should you only key off the market you are actually trading? How do you know if you should use 15 minute or 30 minute or some other time frame or multiple time frames like 30 minute and daily bars. What session times will work best for your current market? How much better is a system if it trades with the same parameters but multiple time frames? Would we be better off validating on related markets rather than other time frames? Should we do both related markets or other time frames to validate systems? What of these is the best? Should we walk forward on a single time frame or multiple time frames or multiple time frames in markets? Should we do anchored walk forward or should we do a rolling walk forward? Should we trade long or short or both? These are all good questions and the answer is unique to every market normally. And in the past, these questions have been really hard to answer because there was not the software tools to objectively answer the questions. The problem is you don't have certainty of the most ideal system development setup. You're taking somewhat of an educated guess before you put your precious equity at risk. It's a bit like the blindfolded game of pin the tail on the donkey. Now we can answer all these questions with statistical certainty and objectivity. I will now present a solution. We're going to build 10,000 systems in this example. Then we're going to put the statistics of the average of all of those 10,000 systems into our clipboard A. And when you look at clipboard A, you can see the average fitness, net profit, average trade, all the other metrics. Then we're going to look at the alternate second day that hasn't been looked at by GSB's fitness and then we're going to compare the results of that versus the in-sample data to see how much the out-of-sample has degraded compared to the in-sample results. What this test shows us is that the out-of-sample performance has decreased by 16.5 percent. We can see here that the fitness has dropped we can see that the net profit has dropped, the drawdown has increased, average trade decreased, profit factor decreased, and that test was using 30, 29 and 31 minute bars. Now we can repeat the exact same test using only 30 minute bars and you can see what the out of sample results is. So we will repeat the same test but I'll change the data stream from being 29, 30 and 31 just to 30 minute bars and we'll come back to that when that's completed. So now we have 10,000 systems. I'm going to put the statistics of all 10,000 systems into clipboard A and when I put my mouse over clipboard A we can see the contents. There's 10114 systems and nothing in clipboard B. I'm then going to do control A, select all the systems and I'm going to invert the nth to get the trades that GSB's fitness hasn't yet seen. And when that's complete, I'm going to load the statistics into clipboard B. If we turn the resource monitor on, we can look on the right hand side under user tasks and we can see that GSB is changing the nth to the opposing date, which is the data that GSB fitness hasn't seen. We now add these results into stats B and we can see that we've gone to a 44.3% degradation. The top example was our systems built on 29, 30, 31 minute bars and you can see that the in sample fitness 30 minute bars has got higher fitness and fitness by the way is net profit times average trade in this example. It's got higher net profit, it's got slightly higher average trade, the same profit factor, but when you look at the out of sample results, 
the 29, 30, 31 minute bars has got double the output fitness, substantially higher profit, substantially less drawdown, substantially higher average trade, substantially higher profit factor. So this example clearly shows why you really need to trade on multiple bar types. For example, 29, 30, 31, or I sometimes do everything from 25 to 35 minute bars. The next thing I want to talk about is the methods that people use for test and validating a system. And in this example, we're using a training period, which is in the red. Sometimes training can be in the first part of data, sometimes in the second part of data, but it's not a good idea to train on the extremely volatile and profitable period of 2007 and 2008. So the problem with this approach is not all years are equal. And so, for example, we can see that 2017 here has been a not profitable year. And if we left that for out of sample period, we don't really know if it's because the system is bad or because 2017 was just a hard period to trade. So the alternative to this is we are using roughly every second day of the entire data period as our unseen data. And this means that we get to look at markets training and validating in all conditions and all regimes. So with nth, what we're doing is after one day, we are not trading that data and that data is excluded from GSB's fitness calculations. We can use other parameters and lengths of days and things like that, but this is just the default one, which is probably best to use in most cases. So what that now means is we've got in-sample data from 2007 to 2017, and if I invert the nth, we're going to look at the days that GSB has not seen. So that's superior to using certain years or periods because we get every year data and every type of market regime or condition. So again, I can click here and change that to trade and we see what the unseen data is like. Or we can just select all systems and do nth and change that from do not trade to trade. And then everything that you see there is performance that GSB had not seen. We can also do a combination of the two methods. You can see here how the date is set to one year ago, October 2017. So we can just go select it all, do dates, non-tradable, and I'll do no there. And then I'll do nth, and I'm going to change it to all. And what that means is we'll see all the data from 2017 onwards that GSB fitness has not seen. So I'll scroll through the systems there. And you can see that we're consistently profitable in that year on the few systems that we have looked at. The next thing we can do is we can verify the trading systems on other markets or on wider timeframes than what we've used. So for example, if I go back here and I change nth to no trade, I'll do it on two systems. Then I'll right click those systems there, verify. We're verifying it on as all bars from 25 to 35, but not the 29, 30 and 31 minute bars that we've already used. And the criteria of a system that passes verification, in this case, I have set to be a profit factor of 1.8 and a Pearson's of 0.9. Pearson's correlation is the correlation between our equity curve and a straight line. So we can see here that the system has been profitable on a lot of markets, but not as many as I would like. And you can see that the 27 minute bars the 25 minute bars and the 35 minute bars did not meet our criteria of profit factor of 1.8. But if you look at this system here, all eight bar intervals passed. 
Now the other thing that we need to note is the verification score. In a perfect world, we would have a score where the other bar intervals degrade by zero or are even positive, which would be very unusual. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at all 10,000 systems here and see how the systems that pass eight out of eight, what their statistics are when they verify the in-sample versus the out-of-sample. And then later on, we're also going to look at the top, say, 50% of the verification scores. So anything that verifies, say, minus 10% or better, we'll look at and we'll also discard those systems or maybe even just test the verification of those that were below 10%. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to select all the systems and I'm going to change the nth mode to do not trade and we'll come back to that when that's done. So all the systems have been changed to nth being no trade. I'm going to do control A and do verify and then we're going to wait till all of those 10,079 systems are completely verified. I'm now going to sort on verification score and the only thing I'm interested in is the verification score that's got 8 out of 8. On heating oil or unleaded gas I might be a little bit more relaxed but I'm not still finalized on that. I've selected all the systems that have got verification score of 8 and I'm going to move them into the favorites. So that shows we've got 692 out of 10,000 have a verification score of 8. So I'll now click on favorites and I'm going to put the statistics of all of those systems into stats A. I'm then going to do control A to select all systems and I'm going to change the nth day mode to trade. We need to wait for that to complete. So I'll now update stats B. And that has changed our market degradation from 16.5% to 11.5%. So what that shows is market verification on other bar intervals works really well. We could also do the same thing on natural gas and unleaded, but we won't do that today. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort on verification score. And this top one, for example, means that most of the bars were more profitable than the original bars we looked at. So for example the 30 minute bars is the brown one and many of the systems are substantially above that. But if I go halfway down we can see that the average is about 13% degradation. So what I will do is I will only look at the systems that have degraded less than 10% and I'll remove those from favorite. So now down to 282 systems. I'll do control A, select them all and put this back to do not trade. Incidentally if you hold your mouse over stats you can see what's in the clipboard at just a high level. So there were 692 systems. So that means I know that I haven't updated the stats because there's 282 now. So I'm going to do stats A. Then I'll select all the systems. Change that to trade. Now I'll put that into stats B. And here we've got market degradation down to 7%. I've got that under 6% on some previous tests. So that's a substantial improvement in out of sample market degradation when we've used the 29, 30, 31 minute bars. We've used every second day as out of sample. We've verified the systems so they need to meet our performance metrics on eight other bar intervals which weren't the ones the system was built on and we've also just used the systems that are degraded less than 10% compared to the original equity curves.